Hello and welcome to Sleepy Boring Objects. My name is Jason Newland. And please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now, the point of this podcast is to just talk about a subject or an object and hopefully by listening you can relax. Your mind can slow down, your muscles in your body can relax. And maybe even if you need to, you can drift off to sleep. And even though I might talk about a certain subject, it doesn't mean that I think that the subject's boring. It's just that I'm probably not talking about things with the most excitable voice, possibly. So I've done a few of these recordings. And this one is going to be about karate, or karate, depend on how you pronounce it. Oh, I'll get myself comfortable. So, my, I guess my real first introduction to karate was Chuck Norris I, mean, I, I didn't meet him in person he didn't knock on my door saying hi Jace uh, can I show you some karate I've got some wood I want to break it in front of you do you want to see it and like that that didn't happen but I did see him in uh, was it way of the dragon the movie with Bruce Lee and he was, I think he was a karate world champion before that movie. And of course went on to make hundreds of uh, martial art movies and TV shows and stuff over the last 92 years. So he was kind of my introduction in a way. But if I'm honest, I'm not sure I even saw him or even knew about him before I started doing karate. I knew about Bruce Lee, but I don't think I'd ever seen a Bruce Lee movie. I had a Bruce Lee poster on my wall when I was eight years old. Don't know where it came from. But it was on my wall next to my bed. So I just looked at Bruce Lee every day for about a year and a half. And it's only really when I started doing karate that I became obsessed with martial art films. And that seems to be the rite of passage for most people that get into martial arts especially kids, you just become obsessed with everything, kung fu, karate, kickboxing, Thai boxing, jiu-jitsu, ninjutsu, ninjas, whatever, Wing Chun, Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, uh, and all the other people that have come afterwards. Now when I first got into karate it was probably about 1984 and I think I was 14 at the time I might have been 12 or I might have been 13 but I think I was 14 maybe 13 and I basically what it was is my friend Stefan 
we were just talking and you know he said oh I'm going to I'm going to the karate club tonight to have a look because his brother his younger brother was doing it he was doing karate there and he thought he'd go along and have a look so I said to my friend Stefan I said can I come with you and he said no and I said please and he said no I said I'll pay you £2.50 over the next seven months if you if you let me and he said okay then because £2.50 was a lot of money back then uh, so we went along I'm not sure if I got a lift with him I think I might have got a lift or we just walked up together and the karate club was in a high school there was two high schools it was at the other high school so I went to one high school and my older brothers went to the other high school that's where the karate club was where they went and it was basically just in a gymnasium it was in a big gymnasium you know um, with the wooden floors and all that stuff and there was all these benches pushed to the side of the wall stacked up and me and my friends sat on the stools watching the class and from then on from that moment a little spark, a little spark ignited inside me. A little, well it wasn't, um, I think reignited because I used to watch Kung Fu, the TV show Kung Fu in the late 70s, early 80s. I loved it and I always wanted to do Kung Fu. And I used to ask my dad when I was little, even like 9, 10, 11, 12, can I go to karate, can I do kung fu, can whatever. And he always used to say no. I don't know why, but he would say no. Even though he himself did judo when he was at school. He, I think he got to brown belt. So I, at this point, I didn't have to, I, just, I, I was old enough not to ask permission really to do stuff and I knew from being there that I wanted to do it and it was every Tuesday and Thursday evening I think it was 7 to 8.30 something like that and I remember the first time just sitting there watching thinking wow like from two different versions there was a wow of how good the good people were but also seeing the people that were just starting and how bad they were was quite good as well because if I'd been this I don't mean bad but you know inexperienced and not having learned what they were doing yet they're still novices to be able to see the novices and also to be able to see the higher grades, you know, black belts or high high graded belt people, how good they were, you could see the difference and realise that what you could become, what I could get to. So seeing the beginning and the end, well not the end but the results. And it was quite nice to see people that weren't particularly good. Because then I could like, I don't, I don't mean not good, but you know, new. Because that's the bracket I was in. So I didn't feel like I was going to turn up and everyone was going to be really good. And I was going to be the only one that didn't know what I was doing because there was quite a few people that didn't know what they were doing including 
the toughest kid, one of the toughest kids in my school. He was, he didn't even have, I think he had a tracksuit on. So he, if you, if you wore gi, which is the uniform, the, the cost, not costume, but the karate um, kit, you'd normally get that after a few weeks of going. You'd, you'd turn up with your tracksuit bottoms on or a t-shirt or maybe some shorts and you do that for a couple of weeks to see if you like it or not and then you'd sign up and you'd get a gi and you know you'd have a white belt so there's quite a few people there that were very new and seeing this kid that had been I don't want to say a bully but he was uh, you know, he was like a tough, tough kid in my school. Not really being able to do anything, you know, not not knowing what he's doing, it was quite nice to see. You know, he's. I don't know. It's hard to explain. <laughs> I didn't laugh at him, obviously, but it was nice to see that. Just because someone's good at one thing doesn't mean they're good at automatically good at another thing. So if someone's good at boxing doesn't mean they're any good at uh, chess. Not that that's really relevant. So, and my friend's brother, who I didn't really know at this point, I became friends with him, but I didn't really know him. He was a year below us it was, yeah it was a year a year younger and he was really good and he'd only been doing it for a little while he was really good he he kind of picked it up very quickly so what I did me and my friend Stefan we went along the next day I think it was this might have been a Thursday and we went along on the Tuesday or if it was a Tuesday, we went along on a Thursday for the first session. And I don't know how long we went there together because he did stop going after a while. But we used to practice in school. We used to like punch and kick each other and block and spar, you know, during a break time. And that was quite cool. And... We he he stopped coming. I don't know why, but he stopped going, and I continued because I, I'd, I'd got the bug. You know, I'd, I just loved it. I just absolutely, for the first time in my life, found something that I loved and felt that I was quite good at. Yeah, I felt I was competent, and that I could get better. So that's what I did, and I continued, and I did my grading, and I think, I think I did my grading the same time as my friend's brother, so he hadn't been there for much, for very long before I got there. I got a first class grade, a first class pass. Now every grading I've ever had, whether it's karate or taekwondo. Did taekwondo um, when I was about forty. I started doing that for a few, for about two years. Every grade in, I always got a first class pass, which I'm quite pleased about. But he he got he he actually got jumped up a belt. He was so good that he I don't know what they called it, but they jumped him up it's kind of the opposite to being kept back a year in a way it was like so he went from being a white belt to a green belt or orange no orange belt or was it white belt with a green stripe I don't know I lose track it's like wow and he was really good he was, he was, he excelled at it. But I was pleased with getting a first class pass and 
every grade and I did, I got a first class pass. And I remember having to travel to the next town to do the grading because that was where the main school was. There was actually a brick and mortar building school, martial arts school, with a martial arts shop next to it, a joint you know, joined to it. So th- th- that was a club. It wasn't a, a you know a, a room in a gym, or you know renting a a room out in a school. This was actually a proper martial arts school, which I would have gone to if I'd lived in that town, but I didn't. However, I think I went to the right place because my sensei or my karate instructor. he held the title of it it was I don't know what they call it but the the area anyway the area title of the top black belt in the area and the area would have been you know I don't know probably uh, a fifth of the country probably that area quite a big area maybe a sixth of the country it was quite a large area and he was the the area champion karate champion out of all the black belts and it's like yeah he's he's my boss he is he's my instructor Yee. now I'd love to say that I entered into some contests and won won lots of medals and won trophies and was in the newspaper and went on to be in the Olympics. But none of that happened. Well, apart from I did go into contests. I think I fought in three different contests, karate contests. And there there were tournaments, basically, and... They put people together that were the same belt, the same grade, uh, or maybe the same age, depending on size. And even though I was little, I was little all the way, all the way through school. Even when I left school, I was, I couldn't have been more than five six when I left school. I'm five eight now. I was five seven last month. I've grown a little bit, but I don't think. Yeah, I was pretty much the smallest kid in in the history of time. You know, at the time, in the eighties, there was no one smaller than me. But I got matched up with someone smaller because he was younger. So I was, let's say, 14, 15. And I was matched. This is my very first contest. I was matched up with this kid who was probably 13. And he ran rings around me. I couldn't even see him. He just literally was running around me, bash, bash, in my face, in my stomach. And that was it. Got a point. Point, 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 done, finished. It was just over with so quickly. And I didn't get hurt. He couldn't hurt me. But he was so quick. I couldn't see anything coming. It was, I was embarrassed. Because to start with, because we were the same grade, and I saw that he was little, I had this, and younger rather, more than little, I thought, yeah, this is, this is quite good for me. But no, he absolutely made me look like I was moving in slow motion. Now, the next tournament, I won the first fight and lost the second fight. And the third tournament, I won the first two fights and lost the third fight. So I kind of progressed and then I stopped going. But I remember one of the fights I had. It's it's a fight. It's a contest. It's not an actual fight fight. 
had pads and everything. It was, it was full contact, but it wasn't, you know, we had shin pads. I don't know if we had body pads. I can't remember. Had a groin, groin pad and pads on our feet and pads on our hands. Don't think we had head pad, head pads, but we might have done. I can't remember. It's a long time ago. And me and this other kid, we just got into a scrap. Like, both of us forgot all about karate, and we were just on the floor punching each other. And the referee kept pulling us apart, saying, keep doing that and you'll be disqualified. And in the end, I think he won. Yeah, he, he beat me in the end. Uh, but it's like, it's weird. Even after all that training for a year and a half, two years, whatever, I still went back to basics. But I loved it. Absolutely loved it. It was a great, great environment. And I remember one one point, one of the, the tournaments, my instructor or one of the instructors asked me, gave me his keys and said, and this is the person I came to the tournament with in his car. He said, can you do, can you do me a favor and go and get my bag from the, from the boot of the car? Gave me the keys. I couldn't remember which car it was. So I thought, oh, there it is. I opened the door and it's, oh, it's already open. And I start looking through the place, start looking through the boot and I realize it's not the right car. So not am I not only am I looking through somebody else's bag in their car, but I'm doing it at a karate tournament, which means that car is probably owned by a black belt karate person, which is not someone that I really wanted to think that I was stealing off them. And in back in them days, I remember I used to get asked to do things and I'd forget what they asked me. It's like as soon as they start to ask me to do something, for example, when I was a kid, it's like, can you go to the shop and get some bread and some milk? Once I got to the point of, can you go to the shop? For some reason, I just stopped listening. I'd take the money and I'd walk to the shop and the whole way there I knew that I had no idea what I was going to get and we didn't have mobile phones back then so you couldn't phone up so I'd, I'd go go home with a bag of sugar and some flour or something and the weird looks I'd get yeah just like the look you're giving me now the weird, I don't know why I just would just stop listening. It's just, it wouldn't go in. And that's what happened with that car. It's like, can you go to the car? I forgot what the car looked like. I didn't know. I think I went back and said, what color is the car again? It's yellow. Okay, right. Well, that wasn't the car then because that one's red. And yeah, so eventually I found the right car. I want to say eventually I tried a few and I did find the right I think I did anyway he seemed to be happy with the bag I got unless it was just a better bag than his and he just decided to keep it I don't know but I think one of the one of the highlights of doing karate just, just one of the highlights of my period doing that was one of the top people in the club. He was, I think he was still like a blue belt or brown belt, but he, he purposely didn't take any other gradings because he, he wanted to do tournaments. And being a lower grade meant he got a chance to win medals of that. 
rather than be a black wasn't it? He didn't care about being a black belt. He did become a black belt eventually, but he was still a young man. He's probably in his 30s, I imagine. Mind you, back then, everyone looked about 50 to me. I was only little, but they were probably only young. And he got married. He invited me and another young kid that was there that was sort of the same kind of age same grade or whatever I think we were green belts at the time or yellow orange belts I don't know he invited he asked me and the other kid to stand outside of the church holding swords so basically crossing swords so me holding one him holding the other one crossing it over as they walk out of the church you know the, the the point where you know people used to chuck confetti over them and stuff and they got photographs taken and the photograph was in the in the newspaper and everything and it was so cool the thing is i was a little bit worried that i might like fall asleep and the sword had dropped down at kind of the wrong moment <laughs> And it'd be in the newspaper for the wrong reason. But it was great. So also we were dressed up in our gi, in our karate gear. So we didn't actually go into the wedding. Everybody else, all of other people from the karate club and the the adults were all there and everything. But we stood outside. I don't know if it was the summer or the winter. I can't remember. But it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And I'd love to see that picture. I'd love, I don't know if, if... That's the thing. If it, if the internet had been around then, it would probably still be available somewhere. But this was long, long, long before the internet even was even thought of, really. So... That picture's probably in someone's photograph album. Not not for me, you know, but that was the moment they stepped out of the church after being wedded. So that's that's going to be, that photograph is going to be saved somewhere. Cause it's an important photograph, isn't it? For the, even if the two that got married don't want the picture, I'm pretty sure their kids want the picture. You know, it's, it's, it's a very important picture to someone. I'd like to see it myself. So if you're listening <laughs> and you've got a picture of um, two young boys holding swords, crossing swords, out, that sounds wrong, doesn't it? But, you know, cross, holding swords and crossing them above the, the doorway of the church as the two people the man and the wife are walking out then uh, I'd love to see that picture I just would just one of those things it's uh, it excites me no end it really does strange isn't it what gets us excited I think it's Seeing something I haven't seen for such a long time, it, it, it kind of confirms that it actually happened. Because sometimes I wonder, like, did that really happen? Do you know, did I ever really, was I ever really quite good at karate? I say quite good, I was, I was quite good. I wasn't no expert and... I'm pretty sure that if I'd stuck at it, I could have got to black belt. But by the time I was, I don't know, 18, probably. 17, eight, yeah, probably by the time I was 18. I think in them days, you couldn't even apply to be black belt until you were 18. It's changed now. But that's, that's, that's a long time ago. And the other thing I remember is, and I've, I have spoken about this before on my Let Me Boy to Sleep, 
is at the club there was no kids under a certain age. I think you had to be at least 12 or 13 to join the club. And I kept bugging my instructor for my little brother to come along. And he was eight years younger than me. So he was about, really about six years old at this point. And my and the instructor said, no, we don't teach kids that young. I said, well, why not? Because I taught my little brother some moves, some kicks, punches and stuff. Just because I think it helped him in the future as well. But eventually, my instructor gave in. And he said, okay, we'll do a Saturday morning thing for an hour, hour and a half or whatever. Um, we'll open up for the rest of the club, but you can have the young kids at the back and you can teach them the basic stuff at the back. And I said, all right, we'll do that. And my little brother went, I think he got his first grading and he passed that. I'm not sure if he did two gradings or just one and then he stopped. He got he lost interest. And then shortly after that he moved away. He didn't move out of the house at seven or be at eight years old, but he moved he moved yeah, moved with his mum. And since I feel quite pleased about that because not him moving away, but that club has now got 30 years or more of black belts from kids. Kids that have started at a very young age, gone on to get black belts. And it all started with my little brother. And I think a couple of his friends went along or something like that. But it, it grew. As soon as they started allowing little kids to go, it grew and brilliant I feel quite pleased that I kind of I was very persistent on that it's because I wanted my little brother to I guess I wanted him to be part of what I was doing to join in and he seemed quite interested so that was cool I mean little kids were doing karate in other parts of the country and other parts of the world but in that town they weren't they just, you know, they wouldn't wouldn't even think about it. But I couldn't really see much difference between teaching a seven year old and teaching an eleven year old or twelve year old. It's you know, be a bit gentler, but it's still maybe they don't spar or you know, but it's still fun and it's definitely. Uh, I, th I would say a confidence booster for a young kid. So yeah. Now I also did Taekwondo, I did uh, Wing Chun, but that's a different thing. So this is the end of my karate story. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.